Right, that's better. I'm Ozzie Smith, shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals, otherwise known as the Wizard of Oz. Hey, how come you're called the Wizard of Oz? How come? Well, maybe because of little things like this. Wow. Hi, Oz. What's going on? That has nothing to do with playing shortstop. He's just showing us why he's called the Wizard of Oz. Oh, he is, huh? Well, it's not because of flips. It's because of the wonderful things he does with his glove. I should say, gold glove. The wonderful and magical things like this. Mm. I never believed in things that I couldn't see. I said if I can't feel it, then how could it be? No, no magic could happen to me. Hey, Chick, how about throwing me a Red Hawk Rounder? Or try some of that stuff and impress Ozzy. Wing it, Chick. <laughs> Not some easy picking like that. It's only something I have to die for. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I make a suggestion here? Sure. Let's learn to catch the ball first. I did catch it. Yes, but you caught it wrong. You used one hand. You should always use two hands when fielding. But we just saw you use one hand. The only reason I use one hand is because I had no choice. The ball was hit right at you. It was an easy play. Therefore, you should use two hands. They're better than one. Watch what can happen if you only use one hand. you a shortstop. Yeah. Shortstops get a lot of ground balls hit at them, so therefore you can't make a lot of mistakes. You've got to learn the fundamentals, learn to catch the baseball. Sounds good. Johnny, some ground balls for the shortstops, please. My pleasure, Mr. Wizard. Here comes a good one. All right, not bad, Rick. But I saw you come back like this on the ball. You want to always be going forward, have your hands going forward. You want to keep the ball in front of you. Not a giant sweeping motion, but a motion that's going to, that if the ball takes a hop, you'll be able to knock it down and it'll still be in front of you. Let your left foot be your key. You get down in a good feeling position, getting those knees and down into the play and always in this motion. 
Okay, Johnny, try it again. With a wave of my magic wand? Make sure you take, go toward it. Okay. Let me try one here. All right, here goes. Always going forward. Feel the net ball out in front of you. One more, here we go. Out in front, good, good. Okay, let's try the backhand. One in the hole, Johnny, please. All right, in the hole now. Make a good play. All right, not bad, Rick, not bad. Now, the same thing applies here. You know, when we're talking about the forehand, we're talking about keeping the glove going to keep the ball in front. The same thing applies with the backhand. Make sure that you have some type of movement forward. The reasoning behind that is that you increase the plane on which you can catch the ball. On dirt, the ball bounces a lot more. So therefore, if you keep your glove going, you increase the plane on which you can catch it. Let's try it again. OK, here comes a tough hop now. All right, Rick, you're getting the idea. Work on it a while while I go and perform a little wizardry. Behold, all the bars. The Wizard of Oz shall return his wonders to perform. Johnny, why did the wizard make a wall up here behind shortstop? And where did the wizard go? I don't know. Maybe we should go look for him. Come on, chicken. Let's go look for the wizard. Forget about him. Let a sleeping bird lie. Come on, bunch. Let's spread out and look for the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Hmm. I've been waiting for you. What took so long? Well, we didn't know where you went, and anyways, we want to know why you made this wall appear here. Well, when I was a kid, this is the way I used to practice, a game called wall ball. I played Little League and all of that, but you have to be careful with what you do there. That's no place to take chances. But with wall ball, you can practice all sorts of plays, the short hop and throwing in one motion. I'll show you. <laughs> motion. That was the secret I taught myself. Off the wall, so to speak. It took countless hours, days and days of hard work and practice. Years. But it was a challenge, learning to perfect something with a different style. My own style. The Wizard of Oz style. And best of all, I made a game of it. Rips one in the hole. Smith, backhand, throws, he's out. Magic? No. Just a new idea. One motion. Far out. Did you see that chicken? Oh, I guess he's still asleep. It's all right. I'd love to try my hand at wall ball. Great. Give it a try. Well, you made the play, but not in one motion. Don't feel bad. It's perfectly normal. Look, they tend to break these plays into different steps, which is what you did. Pursue ball, catch ball, plant feet, straighten up, step and throw. That's all right, but if the play's difficult or the runner's fast, chances are you won't get them. At least I realize I wouldn't because I don't have a strong arm. You? Yes, 
I'm not much bigger than you are, and you're still growing. However, I'm quick, so I learned to throw from where I made the play. Field it down low, throw on the run, dive and field it. Throw from the knees, one motion. Hey, Johnny, this is pretty interesting. Should I go wake up the chicken? No, that dream bird needs all the beauty sleep he can get. <laughs> If I throw from down here and I throw it away, my coach won't like that. Well, in game situations, no. If you haven't learned to do it, no one should ever make a throw from a position they haven't worked at or try for a runner they'll never get. True enough, Ozzy, but even major leaguers get carried away and forget that point. Even the best make foolish attempts. What's that noise? It sounds like some construction work or something. Let's get back to wall ball. <laughs> Okay, Rick, remember what I said about throwing the glove at the ball in two hands. That makes it easier to work in one motion. What's that? I don't know. See the wall? You were going to try to jump over it with that motorcycle? Why didn't you just use a ladder? Why didn't you use a trampoline? Why didn't you even try to pole vault it? Why didn't you even try this chicken? <laughs> Some Boy, chicken, you are one moony bird. Yeah, you tried to jump that motorcycle over the rainbow. Cute, Michelle, real cute. Oh, forget about that. I just can't get over my man, Ozzy. Hey, Johnny, is he really the greatest building shortstop of all time? Well, that's hard to answer, Rick. You know, we're only able to judge great feelers in our time because we see them day in and day out. Feeling percentages only tell us how successful a player is at feeling a ball hit to him. And it doesn't take into account the difficulty of that player, whether a player receives an error trying to make a difficult play. That's why it's hard to rate great shortstops of the past. But everyone agrees that whenever you start talking about shortstops, you start with this man, Hannes Wagner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. As a hitter and a base runner, only Ty Cobb could equal Wagner in his time. As a shortstop, no one compared with a man whose massive hands and bowed legs enabled him to swoop up baseballs and, much like Ozzie, throw them in one motion. 
Wagner was ruggedly built, but Marty Marion, who played for the Cardinals in the 40s, was tall, stately, and slick as ice. And then again, Phil Rizzuto, who helped spark the Yankees to many pennants, was pretty short, as short stops often are. The scooter was also pretty quick and very precise as the glue of the Yankees' defense. Across town at the same time in Brooklyn, Pee Wee Reese, another little fellow, captained the Dodgers to plenty of pennants as a leadoff man and standout shortstop. Soon after, little Louis Aparicio appeared with the White Sox and enjoyed a long career as the top defensive shortstop of his time. More recently, the Baltimore Orioles got broad range and glove coverage at short from tall and lean Mark Belanger. He plugged the holes with great consistency, as did my personal favorite and long-term teammate, Dave Concepcion of the Reds, one of baseball's best all-around players. And today, everyone agrees there's only one Ozzie Smith. And only one Wizard of Oz. Uh-oh, I think you muttered some mystical, magical words, Michelle. Magic words indeed, the word is wizard, of which there can only be one, one per program anyway. First of all, everyone knows there's only one real Wizard of Oz, the one in the famous movie. Second of all, Ozzie Smith, great player that he is, is too young to earn the name Wizard. I mean, is he old enough to be a manager? No, that requires real baseball wisdom, and you have to be a whole lot older to have that. And frankly, Mr. Bench, I'm shocked you could allow such an affront to happen. Well, no disrespect intended, oh great wizard, but really, I didn't think you'd be so upset that you'd forget to give us your words of wisdom. Words of wisdom? Oh, yes. Words of wisdom. Let's see. Hmm. The words of wisdom are, there's no place. Mr. Bench, now that you and your bunch have seen that there's no place like home, I want to call your attention to the fact that those were the last words of the real Wizard of Oz in the movies. Now I want everybody to close their eyes. You too, Mr. Bench, and repeat after me three times. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There is no place like home. There's 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 no place like home. Hey, Johnny, it's home plate, and we're all back home on the ball field. A perfect place for the bunch, I might add. So let's play ball, everyone. Yeah. 